Bearing pointers are an often overlooked feature available in modern electronic flight displays, such as the Garmin G1000, G500, and G5, and similar avionics made by Aspen and other manufacturers. Bearing pointers are a modern take on the Radio Magnetic Indicator, or RMI, a compact navigation display usually installed in high-performance and turbine aircraft. The RMI typically featured two needles that could be set to indicate radials and bearings to and from VORs and NDBs. If you fly with an electronic PFD and navigate primarily with GPS, you can use bearing pointers to help you maintain situational awareness, as I described in a previous video. That information is helpful when you want to contact ATC or flight service, or if you want to divert. In a G1000 system, for example, bearing pointers can show you the constantly updated course and distance to nearby VORs as you fly along the magenta line toward distant fixes in your GPS flight plan. But you can also use bearing pointers to navigate directly to or from a VOR, or to intercept and track any radial inbound or outbound. Of course, if you expect to navigate primarily by using a VOR for more than a few minutes, you probably would switch the CDI on your HSI to display a conventional green needles course deviation indicator. Still, understanding how to use bearing pointers to quickly intercept and track courses is a useful skill and a good exercise to hone your understanding of navigation by nav aids. And the techniques I'll describe in this video can be especially handy if you're flying IFR and ATC issues a clearance that takes you off the procedure or route programmed into your GPS navigator. Let's begin with an overview of how bearing pointers present information. Assume you're flying on a direct GPS route from Burlington, Iowa, northwest to Marshalltown, Iowa. To help you track your progress along the Magenta Line, you tune the Ottumwa and Iowa City VORs into NAV1 and NAV2 and set the bearing pointers to those nav aids, which lie either side of your course. As its name implies, a bearing pointer always points to a nav aid or fix. You can't use a course knob to set a bearing pointer to a specific track to or from a station. As you fly along, the heads of the bearing pointer arrows move to indicate the current course to the reference, in this example the VORs. The tails of the needles always show the current radials from the selected VORs. And here's a key point. Unless you're tracking directly toward a VOR or fix, and precisely compensating for any crosswind component, the head of a bearing pointer always falls away from the heading you're flying, and the tail of a bearing pointer needle always rises. Watch the needles for a few moments in this accelerated view of the flight northwest. The number one bearing pointer, set to a tumwa off your left, falls toward south. The double line number two pointer, set to Iowa City, falls toward east. If you remember that the head of a bearing pointer arrow always falls, and the tail always rises, intercepting and then tracking courses to or from a VOR is straightforward. The general technique follows the steps used for intercepting and tracking with an ADF, as described in the Instrument Flying Handbook and other references. But a bearing pointer set to a VOR or GPS fix doesn't react as quickly to heading changes as an ADF needle, so the process is simpler and smoother, at least when you're a reasonable distance from a VOR or fix. Now let's look at specific examples of using bearing pointers to intercept and track VOR radials inbound and outbound. Again, assume you're flying in Iowa heading northwest using a GPS track direct to Marshalltown. The Ottumwa and Iowa City VORs are off your left and right, respectively. Now you want to fly direct to the Ottumwa VOR, perhaps to avoid weather or to comply with a change in your clearance from ATC. You could insert a Tumwa into the GPS flight plan, or switch the CDI to display a conventional Green Needles HSI course to OTM. But you want to turn promptly, without fiddling with the flight plan or changing the CDI, and then, when you're sure that you're heading in the correct direction, update the flight plan. The number one bearing pointer is pointing to OTM, continuously updating the course to and radial from the VOR. Here, the head of the single line bearing pointer shows that the course direct to OTM is about 240 degrees, and you're just about on the 060 radial, as shown by the tail of that needle. To proceed direct to the VOR, turn left to a heading of about 240. For now, assume calm winds. 
When the airplane is stable on that heading, you can switch the CDI to VOR1 or update the GPS flight plan and track the magenta line to OTM. For practice using the bearing pointers, however, let's leave the GPS flight plan as it was and divert to the Otumwa VOR, about 20 nautical miles to our left, using just the number one bearing pointer. Assume you want to track inbound on the 050 degree radial. That's a course of 230 degrees to the VOR. You could continue on the present heading and watch the head of the single line arrow fall towards 230 as the tail of that bearing pointer rises to 050. But let's not stray too far from the VOR. Set up a 45 degree intercept, that is fly a heading of 275 and then turn toward the VOR as the single line arrow points to 230 degrees. As you fly toward the VOR, the head of the arrow will probably fall left or right of your current heading due to wind, slight changes in your heading, or the sensitivity of the needle as you get closer to the VOR. To keep the head of the arrow pointed at the course you want to fly, in this case 230 degrees, that is inbound on the 050 degree radial, make small heading changes. Turn in the direction that will eventually make the head of the arrow fall toward the course you want to fly. Keep in mind that when you're using a GPS-based system like the G1000, there's always a small difference between the course calculated by the GPS and the magnetic courses defined by the VOR. This difference is explained in AIM 1-1-17, which you can read about at my blog. As you get within a few miles of the VOR, bearing pointers, like a conventional CDI, become increasingly sensitive and erratic. Don't overcorrect. The heading you've flown to track the course so far will work as you pass through the cone of confusion over the VOR. Fly that heading until the bearing pointer swings around and settles down as you fly away from the station. So far you've flown toward the VOR, using the head of the arrow as your guide. Now let's use the tail of the needle to maintain the course away from the navate on the same course, but on the 230 radial. Remember that the tail of a bearing pointer always rises. To keep the tail on 230, make small heading changes that will make the tail climb toward the course you want to track. Here's another example. Assume you want to intercept and track inbound on the 270 degree radial toward Atamwa. The inbound course is 090. You're only about 10 miles southwest of the VOR. The tail of the single line bearing pointer shows you on the 240 degree radial. Set up a 45 degree intercept by turning to heading 045. Now watch the head of the arrow on the single line bearing pointer fall toward 090, and then turn to that heading to complete the intercept and track toward the VOR. Now let's observe how wind affects bearing pointers. You're tracking toward the Iowa City VOR, inbound on the 210 degree radial, flying the course 030 as shown by the double line bearing pointer. Note the 20 knot wind blowing from the northwest. As you fly, the head of the arrow moves left, into the wind. To track the 030 course, you must correct your heading into the wind. In this case, about 10 degrees left, or about 020 degrees. Again, make only small changes as you approach the VOR, and then hold your heading as you pass over the station, waiting to make further corrections after the bearing pointer settles down. I hope this brief introduction to bearing pointers helps you understand how helpful they can be. The best way to learn more about how to use bearing pointers is to practice in a simulation. You can use an aviation training device at a flight school or a PC-based simulation such as the free PC Trainer Suite available for download from the Garmin website. You can also purchase a detailed simulation of the G1000 system directly from Garmin. It costs only $50.